Okay, first we're going to go ahead and select the database we want to use, and then we're going to select CQL console to run all of our commands. Our first command is going to be show, and we are going to do show host and show version, and you can see the printouts that we get from those commands right here. Next will be the use command to identify the key space for all the following commands we do from here. And now we are going to use the describe command and we are going to describe key spaces in our database. We're going to describe the tables and we want to describe a specific table that we want to use here today. And here is the printout from the describe command for that table. Okay, now we're going to run some queries. We're going to start with the select statement first. We're going to do select star which is going to select all the columns in the table and we only want the first 10 records so we're going to do limit 10. And here we can see the results. Next I want to write a statement where I only get the first two columns. I want to also rename location to city and lastly I want the records where state equals Ohio. Again I just want to get the first 10 records. And here is the printout. Now the last one I want to show you for select is select count star. This is great because we can get a quick count of how many rows we have in our table. The next command will be the truncate command and when we run this one on our table it will irreversibly remove all the data that is stored in our table. So if we run a select all query it will return no records in that table anymore. Now our table is still in the database. If we want to remove the table completely, we will have to do the drop table command. When we run this, our table will no longer be in our database. And if we run any statements, it'll come back with an error. When we do the describe command, um, it's gonna show empty because now we have no tables in this database anymore. So now let's write a statement to create that same table that we just dropped from our database. We will have to define the columns with names and the data types that we are going to store. And we also need to define a primary key, which is very important to Cassandra with how it stores that data. All right. And oops. And all right. Now that our table is created again, we can go ahead and insert some data into it. So let's write a statement with the data we want. And let's go ahead and run a quick select query to see that the data was inserted into the table. Cool. Now I'm going to write an update statement. First, I'm going to try and change the state, but you'll see it comes back with an error because state is part of the primary key and we can't update that. Um, so I'm going to write one that works. I'm going to update longitude and you'll see that that works just fine. And last, I'm going to run the delete command. And with all these commands, I hope you've noticed you have to define all parts of the primary key for them to work. And here we can see that statement worked and we don't have any more records anymore. So, all right, that's it. Thanks everyone.